What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Game of Thrones and a Song of Ice and Fire video. In this video, I want to have another look at the secrets and mystery surrounding the fascinating lives of Lord Brendan Rivers, who is also known as Blood Raven, the Three-Eyed Crow, or the Three-Eyed Raven, as well as the Children of the Forest. They have been influencing and orchestrating some of the major events throughout Westeros' history, all while somehow remaining safely hidden behind enemy lines out beyond the wall during the White Walkers' rise in the Heart of Winter. During the eight seasons of Game of Thrones, we were led to believe they were helping Bran Stark, but I've always been of the belief that they are actually assisting a much darker force. I will show you some of the evidence that I believe reveals how they are negatively affecting the events in Westeros from the very beginning. In this video, I will show you why and how they are helping the White Walkers and or the enemy known as the Great Other, even if it is against their own will. Either way, maybe they're not as innocent as we initially thought. If you're able to get on board with this idea, it might help you look at Game of Thrones' final season through a different lens. Now, in order for you to see how this happened, we have to go all the way back to the beginning, when Bran Stark first discovers Cersei and Jaime's incestuous relationship inside the Broken Tower of Winterfell. This is actually the exact moment when everything was set in motion. Let's have a look at how George R. R. Martin wrote that scene, as well as many others, because I believe it was Blood Raven who made sure Bran fell on that day, which will ultimately lead to him helping the White Walkers invade Westeros. Although Jaime Lannister may have been the one to throw Bran out of the window, it was Blood Raven who influenced Bran into being there at that exact moment. You see, the reason why that happened was because Blood Raven had to make sure something would happen to Bran to stop him from growing up and becoming a knight, like he always wanted. He had to make sure Bran would go out beyond the wall and find him instead. Well, Bran obviously could not become a knight if he wasn't able to walk, run, or fight, and that is exactly what Blood Raven wanted. Suddenly, Bran's new reality made him want to die because he could no longer live out his dream. All Blood Raven had to do then was send Bran in a new direction. He had to give him another reason to live. And this is where Jojen Reed enters the Game of Thrones. Blood Raven started sending Jojen Reed dreams because he wanted to use him as his instrument that would deliver Bran Stark right to his doorstep. And we all saw what happened in the show. As soon as Blood Raven no longer needed Jojen Reed, he allowed him to die. What makes it even more disturbing is the fact that Blood Raven showed Jojen Reed how and when he would die, yet he still manipulated him into making that journey anyway because he needed Bran Stark. When you think about it, they could have saved him if they really wanted to. They knew the Army of the Dead was waiting right outside of the cave, yet they did nothing until Jojen was already dead. What's even worse is they showed no remorse after sacrificing him. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, that only happened in the show. Well, if you have read A Song of Ice and Fire, then you know what happened to Jojen in the books might actually be worse. Not only did they let Jojen die, but they might have also fed him the Bran, as a way to awaken and further enhance his Green Seer visions. That's right, after Jojen Reed goes missing inside the cave, Bran is fed something that looks sort of like blood. Now I know there is a lot to unravel here for all this to make sense, so like I said, we need to go all the way back to the beginning. We need to start asking ourselves if Blood Raven and the Children of the Forest are actually working with the Great Other, or the Night King, or whoever the White Walkers have as their leader in all the A Song of Ice and Fire novels. I believe they are using Bran as a way to make sure the Army of the Dead get through the Wall and invade Westeros. I believe they have been lying to Bran Stark from day one. Now, for those of you who don't know, Green Seers are able to look far into the future, as well as communicate through different animals. Blood Raven, the Children of the Forest, Bran, and even the Night King are able to do this because they're all getting their powers from the same source. In the Ancient History section of the World of Ice and Fire, it says, Legend further holds that the Green Seers could delve into the past and see far into the future. The Septon also said that the Children of the Forest could speak with ravens and could make them repeat their words. Make sure you remember this because we will see it happen over and over again throughout George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire. This is very interesting because we hear the Raven's influence and even foreshadow different events throughout the novels. Basically, whenever you hear a Raven or a Crow say something throughout A Song of Ice and Fire, you can guarantee it's Blood Raven and or the Children of the Forest sending their messages from their cave beyond the wall. Like I said, they do this to foreshadow and even affect the events happening in Westeros. Now, as you all know, one of Bran's favorite things to do was climb the walls of Winterfell. This is something he would do often before he had his unfortunate accident. What he actually loved climbing the most was the Broken Tower at Winterfell because he enjoyed interacting with the crows that set up on its roof. 
In Bran's second chapter in A Game of Thrones, it says, There was a crow's nest atop the broken tower, where no one ever went but him. And sometimes he filled his pockets with corn before he climbed up there, and the crows ate it right out of his hand. None of them had ever shown the slightest bit of interest in pecking out his eyes. They never threatened him in any way because that was Blood Raven and the children of the forest inside the crows. The last thing they wanted to do was scare Bran away because they needed him to become comfortable with climbing the tower. They were essentially grooming Bran for a big event. This is when Bran discovers Cersei and Jaime's secret. There are a few interesting things that happen during this moment, and I believe it's what indicates Blood Raven and the children were orchestrating the event. After Bran was thrown from the window, it says screaming. Bran went backward out the window into the empty air. There was nothing to grab onto. The courtyard rushed up to meet him. Somewhere off in the distance, a wolf was howling. Crows circled the broken tower, waiting for their corn. Now I want to focus on that last sentence. I find it interesting that George R. R. Martin ended this chapter by reminding us the crows were there still waiting for their corn. At first glance, it might seem very insignificant. Bran was just thrown out of the window after witnessing Queen Cersei sleeping with her brother, and for all we know, he might be dead. However, that very last sentence has nothing to do with that. I believe the writer is reminding us of the crows because they heavily influenced what happened. Blood Raven and the Children of the Forest led Bran to that broken tower. They knew he would want to feed them, so they sat there above the window on that fateful day, waiting for him to arrive. I also think they are the reason why Cersei and Jaime saw Bran in the window. Cersei and Jaime did not randomly look out the window while Bran was there. Something actually happened that made them look. It says Bran saw her face. Her eyes were closed and her mouth was open, moaning. Her golden hair swung from side to side as her head moved back and forth, but still he could recognize the queen. He must have made a noise. Suddenly her eyes were open, and she was staring right at him. That's when she screamed. Now if you look at what it actually says, Bran does not remember making a noise. In the moment, he just assumes he must have made the noise because Cersei suddenly looked right at him. I'm fascinated by that sentence because it doesn't outright say Bran did something himself. I fully believe it was the crows who made that noise because they wanted Bran to be seen. They already let him up there by waiting for their food atop the broken tower. Then Bran assumes he made the noise because Cersei saw him. However, you must remember what we are reminded of immediately after Bran slams into the ground. The chapter ended with a reminder that the crows were circling above, waiting for their corn. They made the noise after Bran stopped feeding them because he was distracted by what was happening inside of the broken tower. Now, let me show you how I know Blood Raven and the Children of the Forest go inside the crows. After Bran is thrown from the window, he slips into a coma for many weeks. That's when Blood Raven begins to visit Bran in his coma dreams. This is what Bran sees. The voice was high and thin. Bran looked around to see where it was coming from. A crow was spiraling down with him just out of reach, following him as he fell. Help me, he said. I'm trying, the crow replied. Say, got any corn? That very last sentence shows us who was inside of the crows above the broken tower. That's exactly what Bran was feeding them, and now they're letting him know who it was. Now phase one of Blood Raven's master plan is complete. Bran will no longer be able to grow up and become a knight. Now he has Bran eating right out of his hand. This is when Blood Raven initiates his second phase. Now he's inside of Bran's head, as he begins to lead him out beyond the wall. This is also when Blood Raven begins to enter the mind of Jojen Reed. He will need him to ensure Bran is delivered to him safely. This would be very easy for Blood Raven because he's most likely already done this before through Jojen and Mira's father, Hallen Reed. They will be right by Bran's side, assisting in the unfolding of certain events. Most likely the same way Hallen Reed did while he was by Ned Stark's side. Jojen was also a great match because they're nearly the same age, and Bran was in need of a new friend while all of his older siblings were gone. Not to mention, Bran also hated the younger Freys who were being fostered at Winterfell. So Jojen was basically given Bran the medicine he needed to escape the reality that was making him want to die. Now he had a new reason to live, to see what was waiting for him out beyond the wall. Little did he know it would be Blood Raven and the children who would sacrifice Jojen Reed in order to get him there. In the show, they allowed him to die when they didn't have to. Remember, Blood Raven and the children of the forest are able to see everything. They're able to look through the eyes of the ravens. They were definitely watching and following Bran as they were making their way to the cave. They knew when they would arrive, but they did not help them until after Jojen died. Why would they do that? Now, Jojen does make it inside of the cave in the A Song of Ice and Fire novels, but you can argue he suffered a darker and more sinister fate. 
He eventually vanishes after they're inside the cave, and many fans believe he was fed to Brand to help enhance his own Green Seer abilities. All you have to do is look at the floor of the cave to know they've most likely been up to something sinister for a very long time. Those aren't the bones and skulls of the Army of the Dead either. We know they have never made it that far inside of the cave. So, now that they have Brain inside of their cave, they can finally initiate their final phase, which I like to refer to as the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Unfortunately, they might be leading Brand to his own death as well, only not in the same sense that you might be thinking. Now I want you to see what Melisandre thinks when we finally go inside of her head in our one and only chapter. As Melisandre was looking into the flame, she begins thinking about Beyond the Wall and how the enemy is growing stronger, and should he win, the dawn will never come again. She wondered if it had been his face that she had seen, staring out from the flames. No, surely not. His face would have been more frightening than that, cold and black and too terrible for any man to gaze upon and live. The wooden man she had glimpsed though, and the boy with the wolf's face. They were his servants, surely, his champions. Now this is fascinating because Melisandre looked into the flames and wondered if she had seen the Great Other. Only then did she realize she was looking at Bloodraven, the wooden man inside of the Weirwood, as well as Bran, who is the boy with the wolf's face. She believes they are serving the Great Other, and they will be his champions. Now we all know Melisandre has been wrong before, but I don't think we should disregard everything she sees. You have to ask yourself if there is any other evidence that may back up what she now believes. I don't think it's that crazy to think Bloodraven might be working for or with the Great Other, even if it is against his own will. We already know it was the Children of the Forest who created the White Walkers, and for some reason, they're now living out beyond the wall during their rise. Have you ever wondered why they would live out here, surrounded by who they say are their enemy? Maybe they have been lying from the very beginning. Remember what Old Nan said to Bran, Don't listen to it. Crows are all liars. Maybe it was a warning because she knew where Bran would go. Another thing I find very interesting is what happens when Bran went inside the Werewood Net on his own. Although this scene only happens in the show, we might see something like this in the novels because it's what led to the White Walkers entering the cave and Hodor holding the door. And we all know George R. R. Martin has said that scene will happen in the books. Right before Bran entered the Weirwood Net, he first looked to see if Bloodraven was looking at him. He saw his eyes were shut, but he threw a rock at him anyway because he didn't know if he was asleep. It seems Bloodraven was already inside of the Weirwood Net. Bran might have been thinking that as well, because he did not grab a branch that was right next to him. He instead moved himself over to where Bloodraven was sitting, so he could grab a Weirwood branch next to him. It makes me wonder if Bloodraven has always had direct access to the Night King, because that's exactly who Bran saw when he went inside. This always felt like a setup to me. It's almost as if the Night King was there waiting for him. And we all know what happens next. The Night King grabbed Bran by the arm, forcing him out of the Weirwood vision. Somehow Bloodraven already knew what happened, although Bran wasn't even sure himself. The same way he wasn't sure if he made the noise when Cersei and Jaime saw him in the window. But Bloodraven knew even before Bran showed him the mark on his arm. How did he know? Unless he already saw this event happen. Was he already inside of the Weirwood Net watching this as it unfolded? Or did he simply know because he's a green seer who can see far into the future? It doesn't really matter. The fact is he knew, but he did nothing to stop it from happening. If he really is serving the Great Other, like Melisandre said, then maybe he helped set this up so the Night King and his army could invade Westeros. Now remember, we only saw this happen in the show. George R. R. Martin hasn't written these scenes yet. As of right now, Bran is still inside Bloodraven's cave in the A Song of Ice and Fire novels. However, I do believe we will see something similar because this is when Hodor dies. The only thing is, we don't know exactly how it will happen. The White Walkers must attack the cave like they did in the show. Why else would Hodor die holding the door? I've always had this feeling that Bloodraven wants to hijack Bran's body so he can use it for himself. The same way Bran has been invading Hodor's body so he could get out of his own. Think about how long Bloodraven has been living inside the Weirwood Cave. I cannot imagine he enjoys living there like that decade after decade. I know you've all seen Bloodraven in the show, but have you heard how he is described in A Song of Ice and Fire? It's a very disturbing image. It almost sounds as if he's a white in the Army of the Dead. When Bran sees him in the light, it says, Seated on his throne of roots in the Great Cavern, half corpse and half tree, Lord Brendan seemed less a man than some ghastly statue made of twisted wood, old bone, and rotted wool. The only thing that looked alive in the pale ruin that was his face was his one red eye, 
burning like the last coal in a dead fire, surrounded by twisted roots and tatters of leathery white skin hanging off a yellowed skull. The sight of him still frightened Bran, the weirwood roots snaking in and out of his withered flesh, the mushrooms sprouting from his cheeks, the white wooden worm that grew from the socket where his eye had been. Bran liked it better in the dark, because he could imagine he was the three-eyed crow who whispered to him, and not some grisly talking corpse. Remember what happened moments before Blood Raven died in the show. He looked at Bran and said, now it's time for you to become me. The time has come. The time for what? For you to become me. Everyone assumed that meant Bran would now be the new three-eyed raven, but what if it meant something much darker? What if Blood Raven left his body and entered Bran's mind the moment before the Night King ended his life? Remember how soulless Bran started acting after that happened. Bran was no longer the same, and even Mira Reed said he died in that cave. You died in that cave. From that day moving forward, it always seemed as if there was a darker force or energy now living inside Bran's body. After Blood Raven said, now it's time for you to become me, what if he actually meant he would take Bran's body and mind for himself? Maybe Bran slipping inside of Hodor's mind was foreshadowing this all along. Let's also not forget what Benjen said after he rescued Mira and Bran. Mira said the Three-Eyed Raven was dead, but Benjen said he lives again. And in that exact moment, Bran snaps out of his visions. Why did you help us? Three-Eyed Raven sent for me. Three-Eyed Raven's dead. Now he lives again. <laughs> Whatever was inside of Blood Raven now lives inside Bran. What makes all of this even more disturbing is the fact that Blood Raven may have done this against his own will. He might not have wanted to do this himself, but the Children of the Forest gave him no other option. Remember how the Night King was created? Remember how they tied the man to the Weirwood? Well, Blood Raven was shown in a similar fashion. He was stuck inside the cave with the Weirwood wrapped all around him. In the description, it says one of the Weirwood branches had grown through his eye socket. He could not leave, even if he wanted to. And we already know the Children have killed men before. They have basically gone extinct after all the years of fighting the First Men and the White Walkers. Well, what if they made a secret alliance with the White Walkers so they could save the remainder of their races? Why else would they live in the most dangerous location in Westeros when there is only a few of them left? They went from living in the Green Forest to living out beyond the Wall, in the frozen lands of winter surrounded by their so-called enemy. It doesn't make any sense, unless something else is happening. What if the Children and the White Walkers became allies again? Remember, they once fought together against the First Men. That's why they created them after all. They needed help fighting the men who were invading their lands and removing all their sacred werewoods. Now the men basically have everything, while the Children of the Forest and the White Walkers are on the verge of extinction. In the A Song of Ice and Fire novels, we learn something very interesting about the Children of the Forest and Bran's final chapter. I happen to believe it's one of the most important chapters George R. R. Martin has written. It revealed so much new information about Bran, Blood Raven, the Children, and their werewoods. I have always been of the belief that it's setting up how this story will end. Let me show you what Leaf says to Bran. Before the First Men came, all this land that you call Westeros was home to us. Yet even in those days, we were few. The gods gave us long lives, but not great numbers. Lest we overrun the world, as deer will overrun a wood where there are no wolves to hunt them. That was in the dawn of days, when our sun was rising. Now it sinks, and this is our long dwindling. The giants are almost gone as well. The great lions of the western hills have been slain. The unicorns all but gone. The mammoths down to a few hundred. The dire wolves will outlast us all, but their time will come as well. In the world that men have made, there is no room for them or us. She seemed sad when she said it, and that made Bran sad as well. It was only later that he thought, men would not be sad. Men would be wroth. Men would hate and swear a bloody vengeance. The singers sing sad songs where men would fight and kill. I believe this is foreshadowing how the children of the forest actually feel. They are still angry over losing their lands. They do hate the men who now live there. And they have sworn a bloody vengeance that will see them gone, no matter the cost. So, how do they resolve this issue? Well, the first thing they did was snatch Blood Raven from the Night's Watch while he was out ranging beyond the wall. Then, they secured him inside their Weirwood Cave, the same way they did the man who became the Night King. Now they're using Blood Raven to get Bran. They've already sacrificed Jojen, then Hodor, and even Blood Raven himself. They foreshadowed this by Bran slipping inside of Hodor. Now the same thing will happen to Bran. Blood Raven will go inside of Bran right before he dies. 
he will snatch his body and help lead the White Walkers south. Like Melisandre saw in her flames, she believes they are serving the Great Other and will one day become their champion. All bets will be off once Bloodraven gets inside of Bran. There's a reason why Old Nan told Bran the story about the original Night's King. She was foreshadowing what would eventually happen to him. The only difference is this time, the Night's King will come for all of Westeros. Now, according to Old Nan, the Night's King ruled at the Night Fort for 13 years. And while he was there, he was able to bound his brothers of the Night's Watch to his will. Very similar to how the Night King has his army of the dead under his spell. Now, during his reign, the Night's King began making sacrifices and no one was able to stop him until his very own brother, the Stark of Winterfell, joined forces with the King Beyond the Wall and the Wildlings. After his fall, when it was found he had been sacrificing to the others, all records of the Night's King had been destroyed, his very name forbidden. Old Nan believes the Night's King was also a Stark of Winterfell, whose name may have been Brandon. She even says he might have slept in Bran's very own bed. Well, it sounds like this might happen again. Bran will essentially become the new Night's King after Bloodraven invades his mind and body. Only then will he become the champion of the Great Other. And once again, it will have to be the Stark of Winterfell, as well as his alliances from out beyond the wall who must take him down.